How's it going everyone, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the Trinket Shoe Repair channel. If you're new here, my name's Dan. And for today's job, we've got some really stylish boots. We've got these Geeves and Hawks Buckshot Bros. Now they're called Buckshot because they're supposed to look like they've been accidentally shot by a shotgun shell, which is Buckshot. Maybe not for everyone, but I think they look pretty cool. So we're doing a full refurbishment with a pretty cool design on the bottom and metal toe plates. I've also got a bonus job to show you. So keep watching to see what it's all about. Hey guys, once again, welcome back. If you're new, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoy it. So let's have a look at our boots again. This is the pair. I think they're really cool to be honest. I might get a pair myself, but they're in pretty good condition. They just are in need of a resole. The leather is bottom and the customer is a fan of the channel and he's after one of our cool designs that we do on the bottom. And we're going to do brass triumph toe plates and use the JR leather. Now it is nice to have a pair of Geeves and Hawks to work on. Geeves and Hawks are one of the oldest bespoke shoemakers in London on Savile Row. Interesting fact, when they were first established, they primarily made garments and footwear for the military. And this was, I believe it was last year, 2021, they celebrated their 250th anniversary. So they're a very well-known old establishment. Obviously they've moved to more commercial footwear in modern years, which is why we've ended up with these beauties here. So we're gonna strip it off, let's get started and hang around to wait and see what the bonus footwear I've got for you is, it's pretty funny. So what we have to do when we have thick original nails holding the heel section on, we need to reach inside and just peel out the original heel sock liner. Geeves, to make room for getting these nails out from the inside out. Oh, he's being tricky. Right, so I've just come to a sticking point and that is that we've got a whole bunch of the nails out but there's a few left in there and you guys asked me quite rightly so what do we do when they're stuck in there now what we're going to do is sand away this section of the sole and then take off the heel rand and then we can get to the remaining bits <laughs> Right, so now he should just peel off. All right, we just glue him back in place in a minute, and then we have access to some of the remaining troublesome nails. Now, what you can really see here when you get down into the guts of the shoe is we've got long buttress nails for the heel blocks, and then tiny tacks. Now, the tacks are just holding the uppers on, so we're gonna leave those where they are. And of course, as we're removing all these we're not worried because we're going to replace them later. All right, so to get this main sole off, we're just going to apply some heat and that's going to relax and debond the old glue. Do you know what I get asked all the time in the comments? And that is, how many times have you slipped and cut yourself and the answer honestly never and you know just because a tool has the potential to be dangerous doesn't mean it is inherently dangerous you just got to use it properly and carefully anyway that's the sole released so we've got to get all this old cork out now I suppose while we're here, it's as good a time as any to talk to you about shoe construction as this is such a lovely construction. This is a good year well. So what we have this cavity here in the middle, which where the cork sits, and you can see this white fabric here. Now that's called gemming. So you guys know 
that we have the welt on the side of the shoe there that the sole is stitched to, but how is it attached to the shoe? So the gemming here is glued, just glued usually to the footbed, the insole, the inside of the shoes, and then it's sort of folded back on itself this way and then glued to the gemming. And the welt is then hand stitched through the upper of the boot and through the gemming all the way around. So it's stitched up the welt is stitched on and then we can stitch to the welt, which you'll see a little later. Before I forget, we've got to glue our heel around back on. So uh, just while I'm picking these stitches, it usually takes about five minutes. Who wants to hear a little story? Who likes the film John Wick? I absolutely love the film John Wick. Love Keanu Reeves, such a good film. However, a Russian friend of mine, or rather somebody who speaks fluent Russian, told me this little uh, <laughs> piece of trivia that somewhat ruins John Wick, but not really. You know how through the whole film they call him Baba Yaga, the boogeyman, you know, meant to be really scary. Uh, folklore story. Apparently Baba Yaga doesn't mean boogeyman, it means something like Night Witch, which is actually something much less scary, which is um, like a children's bedtime story. Um, it's not meant to be scary of adults <laughs> at all, it's meant to scare children that like the, the Night Witch will come and get them if they get out of bed or something whilst they're supposed to be asleep. And then there's that bit where the Russian boss is singing the Baba Yaga song, the Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, and essentially, if you were to translate it, it's something like him going, twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> However, that's just what I was told. Don't quote me on that. If anybody else <laughs> has some more um, factual knowledge, please, please correct me. But if it's true, I did find it quite amusing. Okay, so now we're up to the bit where we put our new cork filler in, and some of you, loads of you, were really upset that the last video didn't have cork in, but don't worry. The Mega Tin is back. And while I'm here, who wants to see the other shoes that I spoke about? We have had sent in a pair of clogs. And I've got to say, I've never worked on a pair of clogs before. And I think they're pretty cool. And I'm pretty impressed at how they're made just out of one single piece of wood. Uh, the customer, I believe, works with wood and wears these in his workshop, but they're a bit slippy, so what we're doing is just putting some rubber on the bottom. It doesn't really warrant a video, it's a very simple job, but I did just want to show them to you guys. Oops. God. That stings. <laughs> I forgot, I just had to do a uh, finger prick blood test earlier just to uh, check on my blood levels, hormones and stuff. I like to make sure everything is hunky-dory. But the solvent on the cork bloody makes it sting. So here we are, the shoe's all prepped, ready for its new sole. And as you can imagine, we're using the very best, the German oak tan bark jr leather i am a little late using this video so by now these soles are probably all gone they're like gold dust trying to get hold of it at the minute but without further ado let's get it on the shoe so we're going to glue up our prepped shoe and our soles two layers of glue because this leather is really porous so let's get sticky dry come back give it two coats and then heat everything back up to activate the glue and stick it together so right now i'm actually astonishingly hungry but luckily annabelle has been kind enough to offer to go and buy the yum yums i've got the yum yums thank you annabelle i've been waiting for this all day and i'm going to share my yum yums with terry the window cleaner mm. one two three oh. mm. <laughs> Oh, so nice. Get him in the cheese toasty oven. You feeling lucky, punk? Okay, so now our soul is hotter than the surface of the sun. And give it a bit of shape and then get him on. 
of course we need to make sure that not only is the sole lined up perfectly so it covers all of the shoe, but our JR logo is nice and centered. Groovy. press him while it's still hot. Well, this feels like I'm using a robot when I use the press. Like a transformer. Transformers, robots in disguise. So this tool's called the Ranger. And one of you guys said ages ago, probably my favorite comment of the year, this is the Ranger. If it was powered by electricity, it would be a Power Ranger. <laughs> and I love Power Rangers. So you, my friend, got comment of the year, in my opinion. Okay, groovy, so there's our soles nicely on, trimmed round to shape. Now, if you remember, I said on this pair, we're doing a custom finish on the sole and brass triumph toe plates. We need to stitch the sole as well. Now, at this stage, there's a particular order we need to do things in. So we need to cut the recess in the leather for the brass toe plate before we do the stitches or else when we can to cut the recess, if we had stitched it already, we'd cut through the threads and we want to dye the sole before we do the stitches or else we won't have nice white stitches. So first thing we need to do is cut the recess, then dye the sole, then stitch the sole, and it should look pretty sexy. All right, toe plate time. So if you haven't seen these already, these are our brass Triumph toe plates. And the point is they just stop your toes on your shoes wearing out so fast. Now what you used to get is people just plonk them straight on top, but that's not the purpose of these. These are called French tips. Now what we do is cut a recess in so that the toe plate sits dead flush with the sole rather than just sitting clumsily on top. The first thing we're gonna do is just get some water, clean pure water, not the horrible chalky stuff out of the tring tap, and wet the leather sole. And this is just going to ease the leather and make it easier to cut. This could be the end of days. Um, ba, ba, da, ba, da, da. All right. So with our toe plate where we want him, I'm just gonna take our blade and just lightly score the area we want to be cutting out. and then go at it. toe plate fits perfectly and is perfectly flush.
the only problem now is we've got to do the other shoe exactly the same. <laughs> so there we go, we've got a bit of a pattern on. I call this one Crosshatch Fiesta. So now next step is to get the stitches in. Now I noticed when I was taking the stitches out that this shoe has a very high stitch density and that is how closely the stitches are together and the number of stitches. So we need to adjust that on the machine and then get the new ones into the same density. So design done, stitches in, so now it's time to get our toe plate in. So the first thing I like to do is get a dab of glue on it just to hold it in place before we put the screws in. One final turn, get him nice and tight. Okay, so there's our Triumph plate on. So now we just need to go to the machine, whip around the toe plate to make it nice and flush, and then ink up and polish the edge of the sole. getting there and that's looking pretty groovy all right so we've got our cool toe plate and nice shiny edge on the sole and our design now of course we're going to give the uppers some tlc get them look spanking but we need to sort the heels out get the heel blocks back on so a few things to talk about we've got the original heel blocks and we've already got the new jr combo dovetail heels on and i've dyed them and I've also just taken the time to ink and polish the inside section of this heel breast because of course, a lot of times we can't do it when it's on the shoe. So we do it now. And to be honest, when I get other people's work in, a lot of cobblers will miss this step. And it's such a small thing that makes a big difference. So it winds me up a little bit when it's not done. So of course, we've just got to get glue on the heel blocks and the original shoe. You'll see that I've put last tacks in the heel section of the sole there. So that's gonna hold the sole on. And then we get nails in from the inside once we've got the heel block on. <laughs> they call me Cuban Beat, I'm the king of the rumble beat. The dovetail heels always come in left and right for the left and right boots. You have to make sure you get it on the right one. And even us expert cobblers always get it wrong from time to time. So just while I'm finishing up these brass heel tacks, I did speak a little bit about Gives, the company earlier, and an interesting fact, they actually made Michael Jackson's tailcoat for his tour bad.
Okay, so that's it as far as the repair goes, and I think they look pretty sexy, if you ask me. But we've just got to do the finishing touches. I've already nailed the heel block on. I wasn't able to film that bit, but just to get on top of the nails we've put in, we've got to put in the original heel in socks. There he goes. Just press him down there. Now these are in fantastic condition, they're almost brand new, so we don't really need to put any colour on. We're just going to give them a clean and use some conditioner and neutral polish. So as always, using the Saphir Medal Door, we're just going to use the Gentle Cleanser. That's what I opt to use for on uh, nice, delicate, light colours. It's just going to get rid of all the dirt and any little marks that might be on the uppers. And then to condition them, we're just going to use some of the Medaldor Renovator, which is the gold standard in a nourishing cream, in my opinion. Just really, really good stuff. It has amazing hydrating qualities. It's also made with mink oil. It smells fantastic also. And I like to just apply it with my fingers. It's much like a moisturizer. It just glides over. It's a really, it's a fantastic way to hydrate your leathers. It's also pretty harmless. It's a neutral color, so you don't have to worry about getting the wrong color. And it just soaks into all the fibers of the leather and leaves it soft and supple with a nice silky shine. And as always, if you ever want to try any of our Safir products, you can grab them from our online shop, trinkshrewpairs.com. We've got loads of stuff. Let that dry for a minute and then put a bit of wax on it. Okay, so as I say, we could leave it there, but I just want to give them a bit more of a shine with a wax finish. So again, Medal Door Pat Deluxe in neutral. It's just going to leave them looking a little bit more crisp. Is it just me or is the smell of polish fantastic? So there we go, a little spruce, that took about five minutes, but job done. Okay guys, cool, job done, and how groovy does this pair of shoes look now? All right, pretty cool. So of course we've replaced the soles with JR leather, dovetail combo heels, custom pattern, and the brass Triumph toe plates, and some brass detailing down here. I think the customer's gonna be very happy with these. You guys always like to know the price. This job was 235 pound, and I'm extremely happy with how they've come out. But that's it, that is the end of the video. It's Quarter past six, it's time to get out of here. Uh, me and Chris are hitting the gym. We're gonna do some more strongman stuff. Any of you guys that are on my Instagram channel, I'm gonna post some stuff on that later because I know you guys like seeing it. But I hope you enjoyed watching the video, especially if any of you guys are new. If you made it all the way to the end, hit like. Actually, I need to tell you, um, I was really excited about something yesterday. I've finally been given the super thanks. YouTube have granted me the super thanks feature on my channel, which you have to wait ages to get and they see if you're eligible or not. It's the little heart-shaped button somewhere down here and it's a super small way you guys can support me in the channel. Like, those of you guys always ask how you can support me, you can hit the super thanks. That's the way you can do it without having to buy any expensive polish or something like that. But again, I love you and leave you guys. Make sure to hit the notifications bell so you're kept in the loop when I upload something new. It seems like loads of you guys miss my new videos. And remember, if you want to talk to us about a shoe repair, get in touch via the website, trinkshoerepairs.com, fill out the contact form. And of course, that is the online shop as well where you can find all of our Sephir products. But again, thank you so much for watching. I'm here in the gym, so catch you next time. Cheers.